Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Good to see a large audience here. So, um, my name is Jeroen Hobbelman. I'm Lucio Diazio. And uh, we're here to guide you through a learning process. So, basically, if we add up our experience, I think we were debating it, but we are close to 50 years of embedded design experience. It, it must be you, it's not me. Ah, okay, not, okay. <laughs> Good. So, over the last 50 years, let's say last 10 years, we've built up some experience with um, embedded design, especially now with LoRaWAN coming to, to the market. We want to share with you a few design practices we've learned over, over the time. That's wrong. So, basically, anybody that's been to a training or to a, uh, or have a manager that's been to a training, they will be presented this triangle. So, this triangle will talk you a little bit about the choices you have to make up front if you do a product development. So, it is a simple diagram, and making things simple is also very good to do. So, if you make a product, if you want to make it good and you want to go quick to market, you cannot do it for, you cannot do it cheap. Uh, I, I have an objection just on the use of the word cheap there. It has a bad connotation. Let, let's talk about cost. Low okay, cost, so, uh, cost optimized. Just yeah, sorry. So nobody's making cheap stuff here, so we all doing great things. So the other side is if you want to make something very good and you want to make it low cost, you want to optimize for cost, it will take you a long time to get to market. And especially with, with LoRa, this is a new market, you have to test it. So if you want to go fast and you want to go low cost, well, we doubt it will be good. So basically those are the, are the, the elements if you look to this trial. You can only pick two of those three elements. It's very hard to do all three. That's everybody telling you. So that drives us to the first principle, never compromise on good, because we believe if we want to make something sustainable, if we want to bring something to the people that they will love, they like, always start with good. Yeah, I think good is in, in our DNA as a company also, right? So we always start from that assumption. You want to start thinking from starting from quality, from good values, and then you can either decide to move on the left side of the triangle or you want to move to the right side of the triangle. So, so if you move to the left side, uh, that, that's the case when you are in startup mode, when you are prototyping, you're testing a concept, you're not sure the market is going to be there, you want to try, maybe throw it away and reiterate, you know, maybe it doesn't work immediately, you want to prove it again, but you need to do this fast, you want to be the first in the market, you want to be exploring before everybody else can catch up with you. So, the alternative is once you, once you have validated that idea, and now you know what you want to do, and now is the time to go for the kill, and now you have to cost optimize. And it's a completely different approach to the design, but now you know where you're going, and you're actually uh, able to devolve all the resources and the time that you need to do that, to get to the cost optimized solution. So it's two different uh, approaches, and you need two different set of tools and products to work with. So could you a bit explain what good looks like? Yeah, so, so let, yeah, we didn't talk about good. What, what is good? Uh, so, so quality, okay, we all understand quality as in a uh, good product that uh, you can rely on, a uh, product that is available in production for decades, for, for the lifetime of your product. Uh, so if you, if you buy semiconductor components, if you buy radio components, modules, you want to know that the companies that supply that material to you will be there for the long run. Um, security, we don't even start talking about IoT anymore if we don't begin with security, right? It's not something that you can add on later, uh, so that every design in IoT should start with that, and we had a good presentation yesterday oh, yes, yeah. uh, that actually emphasized that quite a bit. And, and then service, we need to think about, you know, uh, the service we're providing to, the, to our customers, to the end user, what is gonna be the service through the lifetime of the product, updates that you will have to provide to the product, um, uh, all the whole uh, discussion about uh, servicing the batteries of your systems, uh, how long they will last, will you ever need to replace them, how, how low can you run your application. Um, so, but in general, thinking about the user and how the user, what the user expectations is, and meeting those expectations should be 
top of our priority list. Oh, great. So that takes us to the second principle, which yeah. is always develop with the end user in mind. Yeah, what's important for him, great. Yeah, so what does that mean on a the, on the, on the chip level, on a board level? Because we are a company that's supplying chips, so that, that's how we think about the world. And if you make a note, we like to think about what are the real elements you need then on, on the board design. So we're now upgrading from a triangle to a square. So still very simple. It's a, it's a geometry, advanced geometry class today. Yes, it is. So we're here to talk about LoRa. So the first element on your design is, of course, your LoRa connectivity. Uh, it can be Wi-Fi, it can be Ethernet, it can be a wire. Anything IoT, anything that's connecting to the Internet has a connectivity. And anything has something smart in it, the brains of the device. That's holding either the stack for the communication, reading the sensor data, or activating things on the, on the node. And in most cases, IoT really looks like this. Communication and something smart on the board. But we want to give you two additional elements that we really think are really important if you wanted to do a good design. So first of them, and I think um, Arm Embed did a really good job explaining in the uh, talk from yesterday about firmware over the air updates. So if you have your device in the field and you want to send an update to it, you need to first store it somewhere. So you have your current firmware, your new firmware is, is, firmware is coming to your device, you have to store it first, validate it, before you're going to switch over. Bulk storage, so extra, extra flash, extra Yes, space. indeed, yeah, you need bulk storage for that one. And the fourth element, um, that's the new product that um, uh, we brought together with uh, the, the Things Industries, is the secure element. So to protect the identity of your product, but also to protect your front door of your device. So as soon as if you open the device for new firmware updates, you also have a very vulner high vulnerability chance that somebody else is taking your device. And that's how you protect it by a, a good secure element. How does it look with, uh, with software? because that's really what the magic is making happen. You have your new firmware, version two. You got it certified, so you got a, a, a certification certificate with it. It's going over the air uh, into your device through your microcontroller, and first it will store it in the bulk storage over there. The secure element will validate, and it has also an additional feature. It can do secure boot as well, so it can first check if it is a genuine new firmware before it's starting to push it into the, in the microcontroller. So software is, is key in this matter. And another thing about software. It's never done. Ah. Software is never finished, right? So there's always a new update. There's always something new coming. And, and if, if we focus on software in particular, I think, uh, I think it, it, it it, the security aspect uh, connected to software development is also very important. So, so um, in, in some applications, um, uh, not only you need those four elements that you've seen before, but if you can zoom in, uh, click me to the next one, please. Uh, if you zoom in on the smart uh, element, uh, that's in the smart, that's, that's where the software goes, right, in that block. And here, actually, we changed the slide a, l a little bit to show you that there are two sections of your code that you need to take care of. So there is the part where you, you might have your bootloader, which is extremely uh, security sensitive as a piece of code. You might have some cryptography running in your application. And, and then you have so a, a more sensitive area of your code. And then you have a generic area where you're just running your sensor. So let's call just the application layer on top of it. And, and you want to keep the two areas very clearly separated. And you want to create a nice barrier in between the two uh, so that, um, you know, uh, accidentally, you, you don't want that ever to happen. Accidentally, you spill over your secrets or your information, your sensitive information between the two sides of the code, the, the red and the blue code. And so for that, we have, um, you know, uh, the latest and greatest technology from ARM. That's trust zone. That's, you, I'm sure you've all heard this, this, uh, this buzzword now. Trust zone is exactly what you need to keep those two pieces of your application code separate. Uh, and and uh, it, you will find that in the latest Cortex M0, uh, sorry, Cortex M23 devices uh, from ARM. 
And uh, the SAM L11 is a product that you can find from, from Microchip that uh, has, in fact, was the first, actually, uh, Cortex device in the market offering the M23 core. Um, so with Trust Zone technology built in. So um, there's an app note for you if you want some, some reading uh, on the way flying back home or driving back home tonight. App note 2835, a practical explanation of how you can use actually Trust Zone practically in simple IoT applications. So, so let's, let's see some examples of, of starting from good and assuming you've done your, you're using Trust Zone or you're using a secure element, you've done the four elements that, that uh, Jeroen showed us. And now you want to go quickly to prototyping. You want to validate your idea, so your job is to create a minimum viable product, right? That's the lingo in the startup world, right? So minimum viable product, I want to get it out fast, I want to validate my idea. So what do I do? An example of that, uh, this is a board that we actually developed uh, last year, in, we launched it in October last year, for rapid prototyping of IoT applications. This was a collaboration with Google. We created it with them. And, and in this board, we actually, with this board, we demonstrated that you can have an IoT application that goes from uh, the, the, the moment you take it out of the box to sending actual data to the Google Cloud, to the cloud, in, in less than 30 seconds. And in fact, I don't know if any of you has used this board before, but the typical experience is less than five seconds. So the board is ready to go, is pre-provisioned, is an extremely pleasant, uh, you know, very rapid uh, experience. Now, this board has uh, three interesting things. You have um, at, at the center there the smart, and, and that's an AVR microcontroller. A any AVR fans here in the room, uh, raise your hand. <laughs> Go, go AVR there. Uh, so, so AVR microcontroller, for those of you that have not used them, those are the heart of the Arduino, right? So if you've seen the, the presentation yesterday from Arduino, uh, wonderful presentation. Arduino is all about uh, making uh, internet, making uh, IoT, making programming simple, embedded control simple. And, and so we have exactly that component. That's the latest and greatest AVR model. Uh, featured also in the latest Arduino boards. There is a secure element, check, so smart, secure, and it's connected, in this case the radio, this is a Wi-Fi example, so that we did in October last year, so out of the box you're connecting via Wi-Fi to the cloud. Nice. Let's do a quick prototype of um, a LoRa sensor instead. So you see on the right side, you will recognize the modem there, the radio module. That's the microchip uh, RN2483 module that is, was the first modem for LoRa uh, certified. And now combine the two together, uh, thanks to that connector there, and a few of you in this room might have recognized that connector is a standard in the industry. It's a micro bus connector. There are 500 plus little adapters and boards, and two of them Soon three of them actually are LoRa boards that you can attach there. So you got 500 different sensors or radios that you can swap into, into position. So voila, you have a practical uh, LoRa node built in uh, one second with one click. Yeah. So last year, who uh, was at the conference, this product was shown in a few keynotes because it is demonstrating uh, basically the concepts we're telling about. So this device happened to have the AVR microcontroller there and the LoRa modem. And uh, this customer, uh, Signal, they made this very quick to market, to test the market, because they have to disrupt a market and have to see how um, the market is reacting, if it is a good viable product. Um, the good news is they are being selling them over 10,000 units already, and now the time is to go from good to low cost. So they have the experience and doing now a redesign with, uh, in this case, luckily for us, the, the single chip radio, the SAMR34. So we do catch mice there, so it's yeah. working. So it's validated, let's go and cost optimize. So what we do is uh, we can start integrating things together. So yeah. for example, let's take the smart and the LoRa radio and put them together in a system in a package. And what you get is the latest SAM R34. That's a SAM L21, actually the lowest power Cortex microcontroller on the market today, combined with the LoRa radio in one tiny, tiny BGA package. Nice, we can do even better. So we can take now that SAM R34 and combine it with the secure element, and then we put it all into a new little module. 
Now, this is done by Embit, uh, one of our great partners. They're actually here just outside the door. As you walk out, you can visit them. And this is the smallest, to my knowledge today, uh, little LoRa model, uh, modem uh, available today, 11 millimeter square. We can try to make it even easier to use and prototype, right? It's so small. Uh, so how about we take that Embit module and we put it on top of a microelectronica clickboard and now you have also the ability to quickly prototype and test that smallest LoRa module out there in a few seconds. With one click, you can mount it on top of your uh, uh, prototyping board. Yeah. So this concept, it's, it's not just new. So we were talking about it with our clients and with our partners a few times. So um, one of the big announcements that, that Winke did uh, yesterday was about the gen generic note. And we took this whole concept and embedded it in this generic node from the beginning. So it is secure from the start. It has the boot uh, capability, firmware over-the-air updates via embed. So this is all in there. So we really recommend this to, to, to use in designs and also do it by example. The only thing, if you do such a complex design, because IoT is bringing the internet and the things together. So you have the developers and you have the uh, embedded uh, design engineers. They are from totally two different planets, and they have to work together. And the only way that we believe you really can work together in this, this early market is if you make partnership, you connect people with each other. So we had the concept, we had the ID, we wanted to make it open source, we wanted to make it industrial grade, scalable, so very good quality attached to it. And if you want to make IoT, you have the device, the device software, you need connectivity, you need a cloud platform. So everybody is an expert in their own field. Reach out, select the partners you, you want to work together with, and uh, let's go together. We found an additional good partner in Arrow that want to do the certification and the production of the device. And together, this is the big thing. Really, really a huge team effort there. So yeah. lots of partners working together to create a solution. Nobody lives in an island here. We, we, we are part of a global system, and we need to have to work, especially in lower applications, work with partners that we can trust, and we can yeah. build things together. With. So. Yes. So we've built this thing together for you as an example. Uh, we've provided you with some building blocks to make it easy. So. Select your partners here, because here is the whole ecosystem around you. There are people that are very good in, in, in the cloud services, that can do the integration, that can help you with rapid prototyping. And this is our advice. Select a few, work together, and let's build this thing together. Let's build this thing together. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. We don't have time for questions, because okay. uh, too short. next speakers. But uh, can people find you? Today? Yes. And where? We're just outside here at the microchip booth, and you can see samples and physicals yep. of what yep. we I saw a lot of today. people making notes, and uh, you over. had lovely slides, so they might want to see you again. Come over, talk to us. Okay. I'm yep. going to get you off the stage. One last applause for them, and then Thank we'll you. move on.